Obviously, we don't run uh, such a big sustainability campaign on our own. We're working hand in hand with partners like universities. Uh, but uh, United Nations is also another one of our partners, a major one. And uh, today we have the privilege to have a representative of United Nations Environment with us. Uh, and she will explain to us the kind of activities, actions are driven uh, by UN on this field and why uh, United Nations Environment has decided to partner with the Volvo Ocean Race to reach their goal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Lisa, uh, Lisa Emilia Svensson. Welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me here today, this afternoon. And my name is Lisa. I work for the UN Environment. I'm heading up the Global Ocean Program from the UN Environment. And for those who don't really know what UN Environment does, we are, of course, a part of the United Nations, the headquarters in New York. But we also have the United Nations, particularly for environment, based in Kenya, in Nairobi. And we are driving the environmental global agenda, so setting the environment agenda on a global scale. And work as an advocacy voice for environment in obviously the whole world. And we work together with countries and government, but what we're also moving into, and this is also part of the whole UN fit for purpose, changing our organization to adopt to what's happening outside. And that means that we cannot solve the problem. It might be ocean health, plastics, environment and pollution, only with working with the government. We also need to engage with the private sector. And I think we heard that so many times. And the partnership with the Volvo Ocean Race and Volvo, Volvo Group, Volvo Cars is a unique partnership. It means that we are not chipping in, we're not giving each other money, which sometimes has traditionally been the case. We're having a win-win situation. We have a common goal, and this is how we can all contribute for achieving that together. And United Nations Environment was actually created in Stockholm, Sweden, 1972. And we have been working a little bit over 40 years on targeting environment um, issues. And the core issue that we have for the moment is, of course, plastic. But plastic is a part of a broader problem of, mo of pollution. In particular, working with ocean, all the pollution, most of it, acidification, plastic, wastewater, nutrients, ends up in the ocean. So we call marine pollution, but it doesn't really come from the ocean itself. So that's why we also started a clean scenes campaign, bringing awareness and outreach activities to engage and spread the word on not only the problem, we need to know the problem, but once we know the problem, we can also act on it. And what could we do? And what could government do? What could corporations do? But also, what could anyone do? kids, grown-ups, individuals. So this is very important, and it's a part of the new agenda, sort of what we're trying to achieve. Not only sitting in meetings and negotiations behind locked doors, it's really important that we engage everyone in society. And this is why we're creating or developing this Clean Seas campaign. And we launched it last February in Bali, and as of today, we have 40 countries signed up and for example, Kenya has banned plastics. We have Indonesia that took an initiative to reduce the plastic footprints by 75%. So it could look very different depending on the country and the context. So we don't have one solution for all. It really depends where you are, regional, local, and national. So this is what we want to engage with. And a part of this Clean Seas is that we have approximately 50, 56,000 pledges by individuals, pledges what to do, commitments. And I think you all have, at least here in the room, um, the little folder that you can tick the boxes that you have done, hopefully, by the end of the week. It's very simple. So it could be low and high tides, how we work on this Clean Seas campaign. And for the next step, of course, we want to have all countries engaged. And we want to engage with more countries and more corporations. And a part of that is, of course, stopping the pollution coming out into the ocean at its source. Thinking innovation, entrepreneurship, stopping it at its source, finding new ways of redesign and recycling and repacking the plastics. And it's obviously a broad, broad agenda. We cannot do it alone. We need everyone. 
And the UN is a global organization. I think you all know United Nations. But even the United Nations, and maybe more so, not even, not at least the United Nations, cannot do this alone. We need everybody to join forces in creating this broad moment of action. And I think we look back, and maybe not that far ago, there is a, I wish I could show that, but you can Google it. You Google how Sweden, in particular case, handled garbage. And I can say that because I'm Swedish, as most of you here as well. Handled garbage for maybe 20 years ago, 30, depending on where you come from. You put everything in the ocean. Imagine Volvo. Take all your waste and just put it out here in the river. That's a normal behavior, particularly good in the winter, because that's maybe sometimes ice. And when the spring comes, it melts. And I know that Norway had the same thing. It's very good, because when the spring comes, the garbage is gone. We would never do that today, of course. So we're changing behavior. And this is the way that we also have to work with. Changing the way that we see trash and how we treat it. I think also this smoking on the plane. You would never smoke on the plane today. But I think most of us remember when you could smoke on the plane. And that was quite natural. You would never do that today. And this is how we have to see, see the plastic problem. So this is what we're working with. This is why we are doing this campaign. So then we come to the Volvo Ocean Race. And why do we team up with the Volvo Ocean Race? And the point is that behind those locked doors, where negotiations take place, it's not so dynamic. Sometimes it becomes very aggressive, maybe, but it's not a dynamic place. And it's not where you find the entrepreneurial and innovation aspects. And this is often where we have to work with the private sector to get those solutions. And I think the Volvo Ocean Race and the fantastic capacity as a platform for communicating, for engaging your suppliers, your due diligence way back, but also your partners, customers, service, you name it. This is very important to engage in creating a passion for change. And when you see the sailors and the movies from the, all of those oceans or one oceans around the world, you get engaged, you want to do something. And this is the way you communicate with a substantive message. So we see ourselves as a content platform to the ocean race. And I think together we have a fantastic mix. It's a perfect couple in that sense. And I think there's just no limit where we can take this partnership. And looking back, since the launch of the campaign, but also the launch or the start of the race, we have done tremendous efforts. Pledges, we have got acknowledgement. A lot of corporations that had financed or partners or sponsors boats in the race, or have boats in the race, have also contacted us in the UN environment and want to work. They want to do commitments. Everyone, business leaders as like, want to be part of the solution. They want to be positive messages. And I think you have to create this positive feeling. And this is what the Volvo Ocean Race is all about, creating a positive engagement where people like to talk to you. People want to be part of the solution. Nobody wants to be on the back, bad side. I think we can all admit on that. You might end up there sometimes, but that's not the intention. So I think this partnership is fantastic. We have um, more than half of the race left. And obviously, we're looking forward to Gothenburg. And the stop here, because it's Swedish, and I'm happy to be Swedish, born in Gothenburg as well. Um, so I do think it's tremendous partnership. This is really not the end. This is the end of the beginning. And we, as UN Environment, definitely look forward to bring this to the next level. Thank you.